Welcome to all the classic car enthusiasts. Another day, another video. Sorry, I might be putting up too many, but I had such a lot to do when I got back and, and, and so much bits and pieces. So I hope I haven't bombarded you too many videos. So um, I said in my last video I was going to collect my number plates for my E Type, and I've got them here. I went down to the insurance company today, and they keep, I said a, I said a safe, but they keep them in a vault. Um, and that might sound a little bit over the top, but in Austria, the number plate is the insurance for the car. So <clears throat> it's actually not possible, it's impossible to drive a car uh, without insurance. Um, well, without getting caught very quickly. If you hadn't paid your insurance premium, the police would go along and take the plates out of your car. They, they have two clips on them, and then the plate comes out. And if there's something, the car is not tested, and it's on the main road or whatever, they'll either take the plates and, and tow away the car or impound it or whatever but these are the insurance for a car so there's the plates they need a good clean up so they're the Jag FF Jag 1 this used to be uh, Furstenfeld it's now HF for Hartberg and Furstenfeld and uh, yeah nice to have so uh, if you had a, a, a 3.8 or the first 500 was a flat floor car so you could have flat floor Jag, Jaguar Series 1. Anyway, so I've got the plates back so I can put them into the into the car and do some other work on it. Um, for Alex, DJRC, uh, he, sh he showed in the video that what, we, <laughs> what happened was we were in such a rush the last day before I left, I left this rear section that fits in here, I left it on the back of the car, we took everything off, the stands, the front piece, and, and pushed the car back and, and I didn't notice it was there. It wasn't until I'd left um, that uh, Amir reminded my wife and she talk, talk, told me on the phone. So luckily, as it turned out, when I got to George Knapp's place, he took me to a local uh, um, fabrication shop and we took all the uh, measurements off, off his Mini, off George's Mini, and we rebuilt it. So we made the same thing. Uh, I made the, the pole longer because I didn't know exactly how long it was. And I made this exactly the same length. And unfortunately, it didn't fit on Alex's because there's something wrong with the rear tubs. They've been badly mutilated is the only word I can use, but they've been badly, uh, the tubs have been badly patched and they're actually closer together than they should be. So it's something he's going to have to look, look at. Uh, but for Alex, please don't forget to put this plate, Alex, on the bottom to go onto the parcel shelf because this will put a lot of strain on this pipe if you don't have this in place. And the other thing I would say is that this one is too small. This plate is far too small. It should really run longer because the, more, the longer it is, the more uh, stress it will take out of that rear panel. But I have to have these plates, so that's how I did it. And then I put this one on top and then just bolted it in place. So this was on top of the parcel shelf of the cars the right way up. But I would make this larger, a bigger surface area. But it's no issue because I'm going to need this um, to make one for my other um, rotisserie, so it's not it's not really a problem. But it was a bit of a panic, I can say tell you that. So I'll pop that out of the way. And uh, yes, right. So yeah, as I said, it was a bit of a panic to do, it, but we got it and we got it up on the jig, so that was good news. Thanks to George and and some of his friends there. So, uh, what are we going on to? Okay, the, the uh, kind of celebrity YouTube thing I did, celebrity, that's the wrong word to use, or, or personality, the, the people on YouTube that I, I filmed on the, the, when, I, when I first came back, there was nine people, and I said if anybody can get seven out of nine. So I went back and checked, and there was one person, um, a guy called Tom Mason, I don't know where he's from, but he's going to send me an email for his shirt size and his, and his address and I'll send it out to him. Tom Mason. So he was the only one that got the 7 out of the 10. Took two goes, but he did get it. Um, so yeah, so well done to, to him. The competition for the tool, I'll show it one more time. Excuse the camera a second. Sorry. Sorry, I should have edited this out, but uh, I'm not that good at it. For this tool, is going very well. I've had, oh, I don't know, 20, 30 emails, I think, so far. Nobody has guessed it correctly yet. So, 
I'm not going to give any clues just yet. If it gets to the point where nobody seems to be getting it, I'll give you a clue. And then uh, it'll be easier. So, that's going very well. A um, little bit of trivia here for, I don't know if people are watching Trev's blog, um, but they should be. The guy is an artist, brilliant at what he does. Um, he's actually a professional fabricator for a classic car work, uh, workshop and they do race cars as well. But he's doing top end, I mean Ferraris, Lamborghinis, you name it, they're doing it. But his skill is, is, is second to none. Brilliant uh, videos that he does. And he is a bit of a, he likes to do things in his videos. So this is just for Trev and maybe other people will get it. And um, there was a character, I think he was called Papa something, I can't remember his name, maybe Trev will tell me. Uh, and he was blacked up like a black and white minstrel with a top hat on. And he, and he used to call everybody Dave. He had this, hello Dave. And he, he talked with a voice like that, hello Dave. And he was a really scary character in actual fact. It was a black comedy called The League of Gentlemen. And there was a, a town in it where they supposedly lived, this fictitious town, it was called Royston Vasey, was the name of the place. But the funny thing is, the, the, it wasn't a made up name, it's a real name. In actual fact, it's the name of Roy Chubby Brown, the comedian, the, he's, he's quite blue. And Chubby Brown's real name is Royston Vasey, that's where they got the name from. And in fact, in some of the episodes, you probably saw that he was the mayor of the town. They had this deal where they were uh, eating people and blood running out of their noses and stuff. It was quite dark, but some brilliant characters in it. And some of the people uh, have gone on to do much bigger and better things as well. But I mean, it was a good show, but it was very dark. Anyway, that's for Trev. So lastly, uh, to finish up, um, I just wanted to make a, a little thing about these, uh, my, my trip. I was supposed to go from Saturday and then come back on Sunday across to Europe and then be back here for Monday. And uh, I didn't get back to Wednesday, so in fact it was 12 days. And the reason was, when I went to Bristol Classic and sports cars, these were the people that were doing the engines. The engines weren't ready. Um, I'd gone on the Monday, and then I went back on the Thursday. I stayed overnight, they still weren't ready on the Friday. So then I had to go to my sister's. Well, I didn't have to, but, but I was going to my sister's anyway, but then to leave on the Sunday. Then I had to go back down to Bristol on Monday. The engines still weren't running in the morning. We got them running, we packed them up, and I left. But I left with everything that I had given him i.e. the dashboards, the gauges, the lot, and I've taken all the work away from them because they're extremely slow. I'm fairly confident that the work that they've done is, is okay and it's good, but the proof of the pudding will be in running the engines. Um, but their, their speed and their attitude after we spent so much money with them was just unacceptable. It's very unprofessional. I will never use them again, and I certainly won't... Uh, um, um, you know, give, a, give anybody a... a what can I say, uh, advice to use them. I, I think their work is okay. From what I can see, the engines look good, they look professionally done, uh, but they're extremely slow, like I said. I'm not happy about their, their business ethics. Um, I understand why they did it, but it's a small company and so on, but uh, it wasn't the way to treat us, not after the amount of money we put up front and trusted them uh, over a period of 18 months. So I, will, I won't go into it much further than that because there isn't any point, but I, I, as I say, I certainly wouldn't recommend them to anybody because they're very terribly slow. And four times I changed my date to go to the UK, and it went on and on and on. And even then, they still couldn't deliver on time. I, you know, I had to kind of push to get the stuff. Anyway, so uh, yeah, that's it for now. And uh, I'll, the next bit of clip will be me starting on the E-Type and doing the um, upper column. So. Thanks for watching it. Let's um, do some work on the E-Type. We've got a, um, a run next week uh, to Corinthia. We're in uh, Steiermark, so Corinthia is not too far from here. So I think we've got a, a weekend away, a couple of days away with the Jaguar Club of Vienna. So there'll be E-Types and uh, XKs, Mark IIs, anything Jaguar basically. Um, and I've got a little problem with the top steering column bushes, um, they are quite known because the problem is, is obviously these are not original, um, you know, these, these are all uh, remakes because obviously the cars are so old in, in excess of 60 years old. 
um, and sometimes they're not made as well as they could be and after 5,000 Ks it's already gone. Um, what's happening basically is it's clicking. I think what's happened is this, the, the plastic ring has cracked and this is what's catching on it. So what I'm going to do is take this top steering column off and this steering wheel I have on this is a quick release steering wheel so you can actually change it for a more of a sports wheel if you want to go you know track day on it or whatever um, you know if you like a leather one or a wood whatever um, so and they're quite hard to steer when they're stationary so I won't turn it but you, you can actually hear the click in it so what I'll do is I'll take it off and uh, there we go Real quick. Okay, so it seems like I've got a bit of a problem there. I don't understand why that's not coming off as easy as it should. So I'll bring you back in a sec when I fix this. So I managed to get the steering wheel off, wrestle it off, and it should come off very easily. It always has done. Um, this is basically a like a snap tight connector. You maybe see it there, and then it has the boss on the steering on the shaft, and basically you just pull this back, and then. It, has, it can only go in one position because all the ball bearings line up so as soon as it clicks in place you know it's right. Um, the reason is, is because the shaft has so much movement in it I couldn't purchase on it. So what I'll do is, um, I want to show you uh, um, how bad the steering is so you can see for yourself and why I have to replace it. Um, and I'll also show you something with the wheel spinners, that's what's holding the wire wheels on there. 72 spoke wire wheels and I'll show you a, a tool that I got from a chap who makes them privately great bit of kit and uh, I'll show you why I had to change the spinners over so catch you um, as you can see this is a these are the spinners that go on the car and unfortunately uh, I bought these spinners for these wire wheels and I bought this side from one company and the ones on the other side from another company and they're just millimeters of differences uh, the normal tool for this car uh, is, is a, which I'll show you, is a wooden, uh, huge wooden piece that you put over the top to not damage these ears. You can do it with a hide mallet, uh, but swinging next to these wheel arches, particularly the front where it's very deep set, the back's not so bad, but the front is very difficult. And I found a chap uh, who makes these, and basically what it is, these are the new spinners. Now, when I put this on, you'll see that the fit doesn't fit properly and it will go on but you scrape the, the ears and you can see there it's not, it's not a good fit what should actually happen is it should go on like this you should put it on hang on, put it on the right way there you go and you can see how that fits very easily it's a good fit on it goes on goes on without catching anything and it locks. So this is what's wrong. So there's one for the front and one for the back. The one on the other side fits this tool perfectly and you can see that that's too tight. The one on the front is even tighter. So you might say well why change the spinners? Because I didn't want to adjust the tool. Um, the tool fits perfectly on the other side and if this being this being aluminium an aluminium billet if I if I change this it's going to damage uh, the ears and I don't want to do that so I'm going to do it. What, what I will do is use these on the XK150 and buy, buy the slightly bigger tool, the slightly bigger millimetre tool, the same thing but I think there's something like 105, 106, 108 I believe the, the different sizes are so I'll get the, 10, the 108 or the 104 whichever, or 106 whichever is the, the greater one. So that's, this is a brilliant tool and because it's got the hex on it it means you can use a spanner to get it off. Now, in the back of the car is, I'll open the boot up and show you the tool. So the normal tool would be this terrible piece of wood. And they, the problem is, as you can see there, they fracture very easily. 
and then that has to go on onto that position there and you can see trying to bang this is a real problem for a start off you have to keep turning the wheel so you have it up and down and even that is a problem because you can see how close it is to the arch and they're just very dangerous this is the this is how they were in the old days and use this is a, a, a mallet but you could use a hide mallet or a copper mallet whatever but they do fracture and they're rubbish to use they just splinter so this guy come up with this tool and I'm buying one for each of the Jaguars, the XKs and I one for this this is the reason I'm changing them as well. Oh, I hope you can see this on camera. So you can see here, this is the actual part that goes into this quick fit tool, but you can see when I lift this, you can, you see that movement, it's huge. Left and right, up and down. This is basically a, a steering lock um, that was on all the Jaguars. Um, and the idea is you could uh, bring this in and out. So you could have it there, or you could go all the way back down. So it depended on the driver. So it was a it was a column extension basically, and then this just locks off when you're finished with it, and that stops the steering wheel from uh, going in. So I lock that. Then this can't go in and out. When I unlock it, you should just bet do it a couple of turns, and it goes in. So what I have to do now is take the trafficator off because of the cables are internally in the car. Take this off. Take out the pinch bolt and then withdraw the whole of the top of this column and change these uh, bushes over. Unfortunately, they're plastic. I think the original ones were, but they were probably baker light. And the plastic on these ones now is not so good. So I'll bring you back when I've got it out and I change. I've uh, I'll keep my glasses on so I can see what I'm looking at. Uh, getting old. I'm not getting old, I'm old. Uh, this is the uh, top steering uh, part of the column and uh, basically I can see where the, where the issue is um, is this is the top bush the thinner one and this is the lower bush which goes on here and what's happened is there's two little nubbings on there I think you can probably just see them uh, on the end there just here and one on that side and they have to fit in these holes here and here you can see through them there and what's happened is the bushing's gone down inside lower and it's actually below them holes and that's why it's not supporting the column properly what I will do now is take this out off camera and I'll measure the diameter the ID and the OD the inside diameter and the outside diameter and see if there's wear on it the bottom one looks like it's okay but I'm going to replace them anyway there's no point in going to all this and then find out the bottom's not good as well but I'll check them and see. They are a bit difficult to get in because they've got to go inside and then click into these. These have to go inside these holes here. But they've got a bit of movement on them. I'll have to clean it all up. And uh, on the next video, I'll uh, show you um, put back together. There is a strange uh, setup on here. And this is this. And this basically goes into, it goes in two halves. You put one side in and the other side in and this is where your earth is touching for the horn uh, button. It's a very strange setup but that's the way it works. And, uh, and we're good. This is all fine. This is all sitting right so there's no problem there. And like I say the top one comes in and goes all the way over. This is what's actually earthing out on the, sorry, this is what's earthing out here to make the horn work. And you can see that's Obviously it's loose there because it's got no, no, no circumference around it holding it. And then you can see on that one that that fits on the bottom there. So I'll put that all back together off camera. There's just nothing much to it. And then I'll pop it back in. So, but this is, looks quite new, but in actual fact this was sandblasted. It's the original from the car. I sandblasted it and then painted it with Amorite. And hammerite is brilliant stuff. It really it looks like it's an enameled finish. Uh, it looks like it's um, uh, powder coated, in fact. But that's actually hammerite. It's quite expensive per tin, but very very good stuff. So if you need anything that looks powder coated, hammerite is the way to go. So that's it for today. I'll put this back together. I just had Max over uh, Mini Max. 
to pick up his spare parts and we he is going to IMM Mini in Bristol with quite a few cars I think there's five or six coming from Austria so I'd like to join them as well <clears throat> they're talking about using the train from Vienna to Dusseldorf and then driving it's a thousand or it's two thousand k's off the journey because it's a thousand one way and a thousand back the other way and he's also talking about bringing his the very last ERF Turbo Mini ever made he is the owner of it and he's talking about bringing it with him and if he can get another driver to, to, to drive it um, or he'll drive it and somebody will drive another vehicle so that's good news so I'll be in touch with George and Haley and see if we can't work out this camper van thing for our IMM which we talked about so take care stay safe keep the faith enjoy your hobby bye for now